In this video we're going to take a look at the Keep Trying challenge on Hack the Box. It's a medium forensics challenge and the description says this packet capture seems to show some suspicious traffic. So let's download the packet capture first of all. I'll copy it over to our local directory and we could um, just double check the file type just to see if the extension has been changed. Um, it does show as a PCAP so let's try and open it up. And we'll have a look first of all at the file properties. We'll see that the PCAP was run for 13 seconds. Uh, the traffic was captured for 13 seconds. We've got 26 packets, so not too much for us to look through. Um, let's have a look at the protocol hierarchy. And we'll see that we have some DNS traffic. 15.4% of packets and then the rest is TCP with some HTTP and uh, form URL encoded packets. So we could select if there's something of interest that we want to take a look at, let's say the form encoded. You can see here there are two requests, we've got a post to um, the flag directory and then a post to loots as well. So let's follow this HTTP stream we'll see the poster flag had the parameter try harder user agent windows powershell okay let's close that let's uh, let's go back and check the other one we had post loots as well so we can follow http stream and we'll see this one has a base 64 encoded value so let's go to cyberchef and we'll say from base 64 Place that in and the string says keep trying Buffy. Alright, so let's close this. Let's have a look at our packets overall um, in order of the time that they are captured. So we have our DNS packets at the start. You can see there's this request. Let's follow it. UDP stream. There's this request to init dot and then what looks like a base64 encoded string as a subdomain of totally legit.com. So let's paste in that string. We'll see that the string decodes to secret.txt pipe one. Um, let's close that. And we have another request which will follow. Also to totally legit.com with a longer string here. Doesn't look base64 encoded. It kind of looks like the view states that you see. JSON web tokens maybe. Um, let's try and take a copy of some of this. Um, we'll go after the question mark. Nothing with a base64 decode in there. Let's try the magic operator just to see if it... Nope, no sign. Um, of anything decode in there. So do we have anything else in a PCAP of interest? Let's go back. After our DNS packets we had the... we've got some TCP. Let's have a look at this. Alright, that's just the post request to... which had the try harder string. And we don't really have much else to go on here so we would either focus on these HTTP requests, which there didn't really seem to be much else for us to look at. We've got the base64 encoded string, which was try harder, and then we had the keep trying Buffy string as well. Uh, and oh, sorry, this was try harder. We just had try harder, not base64 encoded, posted to flag, and then we had the base64 encoded string saying try harder Buffy posted to loots. Um, but yeah, there doesn't really seem to be anything else, so what we'll probably want to do is try and investigate these DNS requests. So I'm going to go and Google DNS exfiltration and see if we can work out what's going on with the encoding of this data. We know that this is base64 encoded, but obviously we've got a slightly different format here. Um, and it doesn't directly decode for us. So let's search for uh, DNS exfiltration GitHub. 
and we've got a few different options here which we might want to take a look at. I'm going to start off with the first one. DS, DNS Exfiltrator allows to transfer in a file over a DNS request covert channel. Basically a da uh, data leak testing tool allowing to exfiltrate data. So it has a server side coming as a single Python script, DNS Exfiltrator, which acts as a custom DNS server receiving the file. And then the client side, the victim side, which comes in three flavors, a C Sharp script, a PowerShell script or a JavaScript. Um, and for this to work, you must own a, D a domain name and set up the DNS record for that domain name to point to the server that will run the DNS exfiltrator server side. Um, obviously, we don't have that, but let's just assume that we were uh, setting up this challenge or, in, or that we were in a, uh, exfiltrating some data. So in this scenario, let's say maybe um, somebody's trying to exfiltrate some data from inside a company and they use one of these scripts on their workstation and it will send the data over the DNS channel to their DNS exfiltrator script on the server side which will be running say at their home computer and it would be extracting data from the corporate network. That's uh, an example of covert DNS exfiltration. Um, it says here that in terms of the features Uses a system to define DNS server. Okay, so you can set this up to for debugging locally, which is interesting. We could go through actually testing this out locally and 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 seeing how it runs. Um, it mentions that the data for the data to be exfiltrated to Base64, it needs to be Base64 encoded to fit into the request. However, this may break due to the sensitivity. So. Basic base 32 encoding may be used by the sounds of it, and it also supports basic RC4 encryption of the exfiltrated data using a provided password to encrypt or decrypt the data. Um, request throttling also included. Okay, here's an example of the server running. So they, they're running the, the, the Python script for the server. They specify what the domain is and then the password as well. So that's the, that's the server side. Then on the client side, they run the same sort of things. So DNS exfiltrator, there's the file that they want to exfiltrate, there's a spreadsheet, there's the domain, and then they put in the password as well. Um, I can't scroll across that, okay. Basically the same, the same settings though on that side. So if that was the scenario here, well, let's, um, well, let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look at the code of this project and see if it looks like this could have been used or how it processes the data. So we have our client side scripts here. We have our server side script. Let's take a look at the server side first of all. Here's the class for the encryption and decryption technique. Um, so progress bar here from base64 URL. So look at the, they have a base32 encoding and the base64 encoding. Notice that for the base64 encoding, the first thing they do is replace um, underscores and slashes with the dash and plus for, this is for decoding. Do they have their encode here? Is the encode the encode will be on on the client side, right? Let's go and let's open up a client side script as well. Let's open up the exfiltrator.js. So we've got the client side open here, and then we've got the server side as well. So on the client side, base64 to stream. Okay. Maybe the, I'm not too sure exactly what this co what um, how these functions work in JavaScript. Let's let's go back and check the C sharp version. Um, 
So we have our base64 URL here, results string.empty, characters using DNS names through the Win32 API resolution library do not support all of the base64 characters. We have to use a base64 URL standard. So slashes and plus symbols are substituted and the padding will be removed and will need to be replaced at the remote end. And you can see that this replacement happens here. So we replace all equals with nothing. We replace slash with underscore and we replace plus with a dash. And then if we go to our server side, you see it receives a message. It replaces all the underscores with slash and all the dash with plus and then it adds on the the it checks to see what whether it needs padding and it adds on the equals. So what's happening here, just to repeat that, it's removing any padding, the equals signs, and it's replacing slashes with underscores and pluses with dashes. Whenever it's received by the server, it replaces those underscores and dashes with slashes and pluses, and then it adds the padding again. So what we're re what we're receiving at the server here is actually a um we need to replace the underscore with the slash and the dash with the plus essentially. Let's go back here, let's grab this string and I'm going to open this up in Sublime, paste that in there and we'll replace the underscore underscore with the slash and the dash with the plus. Replace all there and then we'll, we'll replace dash with plus, replace all, and let's see if we can decode the string. Uh, we've got the magic thing on at the moment, let's remove that, let's just set it to base64 decode. So, still don't have any recognizable string here, let's go back to our server code. So we've done the base64 decoding. Let's go back through the code here. So we had this, the password option as well. The password used to decrypt the exfiltrated data. Where is the password used here? Decrypting using the password and it passes it to this RC4 decryptor. Uh, it's formatted, okay, it's RC4 decryptor, RC4 with the args password. So let's go to our Cyberchef and look for RC4. Got RC4 right here. We we base64 decode it first after first fixing our alphabet, although we probably could have, maybe that was, we could have just done this with URL safe, yeah? Let's go, let me actually go back. Um, in fact, let me pause this. Um, let me just put that. This is a standard. That's a standard, and it's decrypted to that. Let's undo our changes that we made. Let's paste that in there. And I'm just, I'm just interested to see whether we can just use the URL safe. I'm presuming we probably can. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's turn on our RC4 again. And we had a couple of passphrases. Could have been Buffy. We had the try harder, which it looked like was what was set as the key to begin with. And there, if we check the try harder, we can see that we've got this PK secret.txt, and then we have some um, data in there. It's looking good. The PK is a file signature of a. Um, zip archive, let's search pk file signature um, alright, gonna have to click on it apparently let's do pk let's do whole word, oh there's no whole word pk, um, alright well it's a zip archive anyway, you can see here pk uh, okay so let's try and save it and see if we can open it then so I'm gonna hit save here, I'm gonna save it as um, hopefully flag.zip and yeah let's just open it let's try and open the text file and boom we have a flag so we'll go and try and submit that 
I'm going to say four, and the flag is accepted. All right, hope you've um, enjoyed this video. Uh, did you do this differently? Uh, could I have done this better? Let me know.